want to thank you for the opportunity. You and Steve Cryer, my manager, has kind of threw me into, this, into the fire, and I, I appreciate it. The one thing, though, is you told me when you took the picture that uh, it wouldn't add 10, 10 pounds to my, uh, to my frame, and you lied. So I didn't lie. The camera did. <laughs> How are we all doing today? Good. Um, I got a couple notes here to start out with, kind of a couple uh, softball ideas and questions to throw at you. And then we're going to jump into a kind of a, just a brief overview of what we do as, as a security provider. So first of all, my name is Steve Emmer, not Tom Emmer. Some of you might know my cousin Tom, who is not the governor of the state of Minnesota. But there isn't a day that goes by that someone doesn't ask me. So they say, ask me if he's uh, my uncle. And I say, no, he's only five years old. It means he's got a little more gray. And so um, get that out of the way. I, I'm up in Lionel Lakes with my wife and my two kids, Sam and, and Avery. The ADT headquarters is for this region, for the three-state region, is in Shoreview, Minnesota. So I have about a three-minute drive to work, which is nice. So a um, couple things. Um, the, the, the one question I wanted to kind of ask everybody starting out was um, the, we get this a lot. People, people obviously um, will ask, well, they'll, they'll say, who's ADP? Who knows what ADP does? Okay, and who's AT&T? Okay, we're ADT, obviously. So I just kind of want to get that out of the way. You guys have been around for 138 years, so it certainly is, uh, certainly is a deal. Um, we're very proud of, of our history and our past and what we do, but more importantly for the, for the application for uh, today's seminar is, is to kind of go over an overview of what's going on with, with how to protect. You know, we're, we're in the business to help you find out what, how you make money and what's important to you and how to protect it. So that's really the essence of what we do. Um, Mike, Kent, and John, I appreciate you know be, doing, being on the cover with me. I, I appreciate the help there. Um, other than that, what I'm going to probably do is just uh, just jump right into the the, the PowerPoint and kind of go through um, some points. Um, if you have any questions, there's maybe some time at the end you can ask, or we can talk about it uh, when we get outside in the networking area uh, time. So let's get started. Um, before one more thing before we get started. Out of you guys are all tied into small business or have your own small business or some type of business or obviously homes we protect as well. But in the small business realm, the one question I'm going to ask I mean, you guys, um, I, I usually ask this when I go on an appointment. One of the first things I ask is out of 10 businesses, like if you take 10 people here and take their business, out of those 10, how many do you think actually get security, monitoring, not from ADT specifically, but just in general, any type of monitoring. So, uh, someone wants to raise their, raise their hand and throw a number out. Uh, three? Okay, what else? There, it's, that's not the right answer. <laughs> Sorry. Four. No. Oh, geez, here we go. One? One? No. All of them should, right? It's actually eight out of ten. And that's not our information that we throw out there. That's a fact. That's a national... That's a number that comes out. And my boss, Steve, always brings that up, and he thinks, you know, because you'll hear too a lot. Oh, just, you know, well, maybe people should get it. But the whole idea is very few businesses out there um, will say to me during, throughout the course of, of, of talking to them, um, we have nothing here to protect. Because even, even if it's not money, it's company files, it's computers, it's things that if you have to call your clients and say your information has been compromised, it's along those lines. There's many things that can, that, other than just a cash value or, or goods that are going out the door. So, but uh, yeah, it's eight out of 10. So um, we're here. The topic is shields up, protect your business, obviously. Um, have you ever, ever heard someone say the following? Uh, I don't think that would ever happen to me. Uh, I trust all of my employees. You probably heard that. That kind of thing doesn't happen in this town or this area. Uh, unfortunately, as, as, as much as you, hear, as you hear those things, and I hear them, believe me, more, more than once a day. The whole idea is these things do happen. And usually they happen, when they happen to you, you can't believe they happen because usually it is the people you trust or your, your relatives that are helping out with the till and things are, things are amiss. Um, so these things do happen. That's just that's the point of, um, like, like, like Steve, my manager will always say, it's, it's not a matter when they'll happen, it's a matter of if they'll happen, when they'll happen. So that's... Uh, the key to protecting your business from these perils is to be proactive and analyze your business for its risk areas. Um, virtually, that's what we do. 
we analyze the risk areas, come up with an idea or a solution for those problems. Uh, there's four areas that we, that we basically break down for the risk evaluation. Protection of investment is just that. Say this is your business, you're protecting what's inside that business and even things that are on the perimeter on the outside. Um, the next thing would be liability and safety. These are, these are issues that people don't really realize until they happen. And, uh, we just heard uh, some, some issues that, that in the, the speech before us. Um, liability and safety, from, from both a standpoint, if someone slips and falls or hurts themselves and you have documentation of that, um, you can prove that it actually happened for one and for two, you can, you're covered on that as far as, as, far as being able to file an insurance claim, what have, you, what have you. Employee productivity is big. Um, obviously, <clears throat> that's a big part of your, you know, when you, when you run a business, you want your employees to be as productive as they possibly can. Obviously, there's things that pull them from their job, smoke breaks and, you know, internet searching and things like that that are becoming more and more prevalent. Maybe not smoking so much, but this internet, social, social uh, networking, all those things. Um, are, that's, that's a third level of, of what we look for the evaluation. And then finally, um, the bottom line profitability. In a restaurant situation, if you have someone um, running a till or pouring liquor and they're over pouring or they're taking money out of the till, and they're, those are the type of things that affect your bottom line profitability. Um, so getting the, the protection of investment, start there. The first thing we do is we, it's a building and a spa space risk evaluation. We literally go around and find areas that could be detrimental in the back, let's say in the back of the, the uh, loading dock area that's got slip and fall issues with ice and some, ha some hazards out there, um, to just basically protecting your, your front door, back door, and, and certain things with motion detectors and certain, um, to basically do an overall evaluation to make sure that, that, uh, that things are good. As I mentioned, points of entry, valuable areas, obviously back offices, storage rooms, places where you keep the safe. A lot of times we'll say, you know, if you were to be broken in, you came to work tomorrow and that door was jarred open, what's the first thing you, you know, other than calling the cops, what's the first thing you would do? What's the first thing you would run for? If you ran a business, what, what, what you call the cops, but what, okay, what would you go look for? Um, all the areas where there's bad light. Right, so like a safe or a, uh, maybe some, some, yeah, or a computer with the company or the, the, your, your customer files on it and what have you. But yeah, you're, you're, but you would call the cops usually. <laughs> Cash registers, those type of things. Once again, areas where you, you have potential to lose that money. Um, once again, we're here to find out how you make your money and how, <laughs> help you keep more of it. So, uh, and equipment and inventory. So we kind of went through some of those. And this is becoming more and more. that We mentioned this a couple times already, but the files and proprietary information someone gets your patents or someone gets your customer files, like I mentioned, that call to have to call them and say, your, your information been compromised. Identity theft is unbelievable. I don't need to, you guys all read the papers and read the news and see it on the internet, so. Liability and safety, employee work areas, it speaks for itself. Client common areas, um, situations where you might have, you know, people in a break room or certain things might happen. Have the surveillance of some sort so you have so you can document if things do happen or if employees do come to you and, and bring up those issues. Parking areas is real big. Um, you know, we'll put a system in to a place, a system meaning a security system, but they'll also ask, well, what about surveying or video cameras for the back, you know, where people walk in, where people are, you know, dump, throwing stuff in our dumpster, a lot of those things. You can imagine how many things, and we hear so many different things from different people. Um, it makes our job pretty interesting because it's amazing what some of, these, some of our customers come up with as far as solutions too. So we work together with them. We talked about receiving areas. Big issue there is, is people bringing goods and services in through the back door. You might not see them and you know, someone might be leaving, saying they left three, three pallets when they really only left two. There's ways to document that stuff. Employee productivity, time and attendance. On time, leave time early. There's systems in place where you can literally, through your internet, through your smartphone, through your internet connection, you, you can actually arm and disarm, know who's coming and going. Employees that show up to the door that you don't tr trust yet, you give them a key, you tell them to call you, you can actually activate this, deactivate the system, they get into the place, they do their job for the day, and they leave at the end of the day using the same, until there's some trust built up there. So um, once again, these are all things that come up from, from people we've, we've dealt with. 
downtime and breaks speaks for itself. I mean, more, you know, just the whole, you know, productivity thing. We talked about, touched on this, the social networking and the internet use. Um, you know, it's a little times, it's, at times it's a little big brotherish. You know, it's, it's too bad that we have to do some of these things, but then again, it all comes down to, to being, uh, per, you know, to protecting your investment. Um, and then employee, employee efficiency. Uh, what you're looking at here is just the efficiency of your, of, of your people that are doing, doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, what, are they, what, do you, what do they look like to um, people maybe outside the company that are, that are visiting and what have you? It all comes down to accountability and, and reliability. So bottom line profitability, this is the other one. The inventory supply loss, we, that speaks for itself. We, we talked about that. The cash handling and employee error, this is becoming, you, you hear the places that are losing uh, thousands upon thousands of dollars. Someone had a gambling problem or whatever, um, and they're, they're finding that they've, they've been embezzling from the company for years and years. Um, you're like, how can a security system detect that? Well, it's more than just a security system protecting the front door and back door. There's things that you can put in place through streaming and through closed caption television. I'll get that in a little bit here. There's many things you can do. We talked about the embezzlement and skimming. Um, anybody here know what sweethearting is or gift, gifting? Is anybody in the restaurant business? What, what's sweethearting? Well, if somebody gets a sweetheart deal, I come in and get a $12 meal for eight bucks. Very good, excellent. Um, bar and restaurant owners, they, very good. You get a free sticker. Yeah. <laughs> I got like. <laughs> All right, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, the, the whole the whole idea of sweetheart is huge. I mean, it, it, not only taking from the till and all that, but you know, your buddy comes up, you give him this, you give him half off, or you give him for free. Um, I, I've even seen it where they'll take a bottle of liquor, high end, let's say a high a high shelf scotch or whiskey or something, and just pouring, just portioning out too much of that. I mean, there you literally can keep track of that without having those. Those, those uh, electronic juggers on there. Um, but that's all, that all comes to you if you're pouring two shots and you're only charged one, it's a 40 buck shot. I mean, that's, there's a lot of money missing there, so. The customer service, going back to the customer impression, customer service, customer experience, that whole thing. Uh, energy consumption and conservation is another huge one for us with our Pulse technology. You're able to, you know, what's your name? Steven. That's my name, all right, good name. Uh, Steven comes in and he's a, he likes it cold, so he turns the temperature way down to 60. The boss doesn't like it so much because it's costing a lot of money to have it crank down way to 60 or the other way, all the way up to 90, let's say, in the wintertime. You can actually control and monitor through your internet connection, through your smartphone, all that, the, the lights, the, the, the temperature, the, the system on and off, who's coming and going, when they're coming and going. So you know all these things. You know that if Steven shows up late for work, you know he's there at 935. At least you don't have to go down there and open the doors up because he's already there. You know he's there. He's just a little late turning up the air conditioning. <laughs> Four areas of risk evaluation. We went through this, the protection of investment, liability and safety, employee productivity, and the bottom line profitability. Okay, so what? I just went through this, I just rambled through this thing and you're like, who cares, well, so what? Well, what are we here for? You know, if I were in your seat, I'd be asking, you know, how do I stop all that? Or what, how does that affect me? What's that gonna do for me? And, then, and that's obviously something we can talk about down the road, but in our business, we deter we make the solution evident. We put cameras up, we put systems up, we put stickers up, we put signs up. Because we've had criminals literally give us uh, interviews saying if there's a sticker, not necessarily an ADT sticker, but a sticker, they move on to the next house. If there's a dog, they move on to the next So my point is, the more you can do to deter them from even going in the business to begin with is a huge advantage. In fact, we leave stickers and signs when we sign the, the agreement people get them right away, and they love it. The, 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 their face just, I mean, just the relief goes over them. And then, you know, so let's say we do all that. We need to still be able to prove, just having a sticker and a sign up isn't gonna do anything. You have to be able to prove that through video surveillance, through DVR, through CCTV, as I mentioned, those type of things. And then you would set up trigger and trap points. Um, a trap point or trigger would be someone going into one office when they're not supposed to be, have it set up where that door contact opens, it takes a snapshot, 30 second clip of who went in there, and you can document that. Steven, why were you in the office? Well, I was going back there to get something. Well, the clip shows you were digging in my drawers for something else, so. <laughs> it's a great behavior modification tool. If someone knows, I have a Hudson liquor store, they literally have a, a pulse camera sitting right here. So when you walk up to pay, 
when that cache drawer opens, that connection, that door contact, just like you put on a door, tells the camera to take a picture. It takes it five seconds before the drawer open and 25 after. So you're like, so what? He knows everybody who comes in there. He's also got a camera right on the till. So he knows if someone's doing this and this, they got it five seconds before it happened, 25 after. So those are creative things that people have come up for as you know, we've, we've d done the experience with them. So, and then document, obviously, information, action to take, what, what, what steps to take next, solution services, intrusion detection. These are things we do. This is what, what we can offer. Um, we're not just a burglar alarm company. Um, although we use the same technology we have for many, many years. Like I said, we've been around for 138 years and counting. Um, intrusion detection, pulse interactive is intrusion detection. And when I say intrusion, it's like your typical burglar alarm system you think of. The pulse interactive is a whole, it's, it's a whole new, uh, uh, we, we started, we're the first ones to come out with that technology and it's, it's just a bit unbelievable. The, the CCTV and video surveillance is virtually the same thing closed caption television, cameras into a DVR is one form. The pulse streaming video, which takes clips, is a different form. Streaming versus, you know, solid documented DVR type, type uh, documentation. This has become, since Sandy Hook and Columbine, actually that's the, the movie theater, where was it, in Colorado? Aurora. Aurora, that one of our service centers, ADT has six service centers. Um, that answer the phone when some things happen, whenever anything happens. Um, they, it happened in the parking lot across from our Aurora facility, which is crazy because we thought there was 80 people in that theater. It was, it was nuts. But my point is this access control, this little thing right here, is, it's just blown up. And I mean that because people are trying to protect people knowing when they're coming and going. Steven gets fired because he was in the office. Remember we told you that earlier? <laughs> He gets pushed out the door, you immediately can go in and take that system and he can't get back in. Now he might be able to take someone else's and, you know, but he can't get back in with his system, with his card, I should say. This is, this is fast becoming one of the big areas. Even people like, well, we're not that big of a company. We can't really, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're talking five to 10 cards and you've got a system that's, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing way. Um, so these are kind of the, the different areas. Uh, you know, what's the next steps, you know, where do you start? Get a professional risk assessment from me or from someone that's in the industry that can sit down with you and show you not so much, you know, you need 14 cameras, this and that. It's more, I, I approach it like, you know, let's get you what you need and protect your premise. Do it, do, find a solution, fit your needs and move on from there. And that's what you talk about, customized solution. And then the implement, implementation plans and steps, the next steps of, of how to go about that. And then all these things are done under a budget consideration. We understand I, how many times I hear people say, oh, we're just starting. We don't have any money. We don't have, I think I was talking to the gentleman in the back there. Um, you, you hear that so much, but it's like you don't want to get that phone call three months from now. I was talking to you, actually. To get that phone call three months from now and say, guess what? We should have done it. We just got our door broken in, and they took our cash register with you know, thousands of dollars in it. Those are the calls we hate to get. So. Um, that's pretty much it. I just throw back. If you guys have any general questions right now, great. If not, then uh, we move on to the next. I just have a quick question. Oh, sure. I know that you guys have a size restriction for small business, and then you refer people about 7,500 square feet to a company that's related to you. Is that correct? How did you know that? Because uh, I spoke to you guys. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, she brings up a good point. If I can touch on it real quick. Um, that's true. We have... We're small, but ADT was it for, forever. Tyco came in and joined us, or they took us and said, we like you. And then we recently split in October. We still work with Tyco guys. We still work with them. They do a lot of the big box, the, the big the 154 camera Walmarts and stuff like that. Um, but if you were to call in, you would say, how, how, big's your, how many square feet is your business? It will be uh, approximately 10 to 12 square feet. Then I can't help you. Well, it depends. It, it, it does depend on some things. Usually there's, there's a square footage because of the Tyco. There's, they, they still, we have to follow those guidelines. But as far as, as far as helping with that, smaller businesses or your residential, we can do those two things. If it's a situation where you need fire or something larger, then Tyco would take care of that. But it, like I said, they're like, they're, we still work in, I still work in the same, my office is right next to there. So 
So we'll, that's that's good that it's good that you brought that up. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it.